Zhang Mei Ching wasn't supposed to walk again. The nerves in his lower back have been badly damaged. He has no feeling in his left leg and barely any in the right one. Ten years ago, Pang was a university graduate, caught up in a swirl of hope that whipped up China's physical and political center for seven weeks in 1989. This is where Pang Meiqing's life took an irreversible turn when the People's Army began firing on student protesters ten years ago. Mr. Pang spent four years in hospital. For the first 12 months, he was bedridden. After an agonizing year of rehabilitation, he was able to stand. Two years later, he was walking with the aid of crutches. Uh, like Ten years ago, Mr. Pang had just graduated as a technician. He had a stable job and a promising future. Now, no one dares to give him work, so he has to find it for himself. This month, he's found space on the pavement, selling second-hand books to Beijing's migrant worker population. He struggles to make a living in a city where he's now become an outcast. In the mid-80s, China was fast becoming a powder keg as the nation's youth demanded reform. But in the aftermath of 89, the leadership unleashed a new economic boom, giving the urban masses more opportunities to release their pressures. of each season, China's universities hold sports carnivals to encourage a spirit of camaraderie. Throughout China's modern history, students have occupied a special place in society. In the past, they've been the torchbearers for all the major political movements. Students are considered the hope of the nation and the intellectuals of the future. But in the days since 1989, a nervous leadership has weakened the students as a political force.
21-year-old Sun Lu Jing is one of China's new breed of students. How does this compare with 10 years ago? Like most of China's 20-somethings, Sun has grown up in the era of capitalist transformation. She's developed a taste for Western luxuries, like Beijing's chic new American coffee chain, where coffee costs about $5 a cup. It's the place to be seen. In China's cities, the good life is now within reach of more and more people. Bars, discos, nightlife provide urban Chinese with a taste for the finer things from the West. It's this kind of development that's won points for the leadership from young people. Yes! Yeah! Bill Yin has taken to Beijing's new bar culture like a fish to water. He graduated from university in 89, but he's an unapologetic beneficiary of the post Tiananmen transformation. Groomed to work in a state factory, Bill Yin believes Beijing's burgeoning bar scene could turn millions of Chinese into darts enthusiasts, in turn earning him a few million dollars. Ideals like democracy are pointless, he says. What counts is the hard reality of having money. Last month, at the instigation of the government, China's students rose up for the first time in 10 years. It was the backlash which followed NATO's bombing of China's embassy in Belgrade, but the blame was laid squarely with the United States. In four days of protests, which were at times violent, at times theatrical, China's youth turned their backs on Western notions of freedom. Tiananmen survivor Pang Mei Ching watched the protests, disgusted to see students behaving as tools of the government. 所有的这个中国的新闻不叫新闻叫宣传宣传是为为我们党服务的不是纯粹的新闻所以说它它的这个既然就是说它的作用已经肯定了那就是说它产生的功能那肯定就是为政府服务我觉得中国老百姓要学
On the 10th anniversary of the Tiananmen crackdown, Bill Yin won't be sparing a thought for the naive goals of his former peers. Like any other typical evening, Bill will dine with his friends. There will be no discussion of politics at the table. Sun Lu Jing also makes preparations to go out with friends. No doubt they will maintain the rage about what the government has told them is U.S. aggression in Yugoslavia. Pang Mei Ching wants to commemorate the anniversary with other survivors, but doesn't know if the police will suddenly appear at his door. Like the deep scar on his back, he can't forget the night his life changed, and he cannot forgive the perpetrators. By appearing in this story, Pang Mei Ching knows his life may be made even more miserable by the authorities. He says it's a price he's prepared to pay for a principle that shouldn't be forgotten. Beijing